The amount of different species of humans and pre-humans that have roamed the Earth is actually quite staggering. The more I research our human evolutionary timeline, the more amazed I am. I have covered the most well-known species mostly so far, uh, but I also love looking into the species that are barely spoken about, that we don't know as much about as the other species that we have found lots of fossils from and a lot more evidence. My name is Kaylee, and in this video I'm going to take a look into a species from Kenya that was discovered in the late 1990s. Not only was this a new species, but this species was part of a new genus, as it differed too much from the other species in the Australopithecus, Paranthropus and Homo genuses. So after Louis and Mary Leakey stopped working in Kenya, their son Richard Leakey, who unfortunately passed away earlier this year on January 2nd, 2022, he continued their work in the field of paleoanthropology. In the 1970s, he eventually married his colleague Meve Epps, and they have done some amazing things for the field of paleoanthropology. It was actually one of the technicians of Meve Leakey that discovered a left upper jawbone in August of 1998 at Lomekwi West at Lake Turkana in Kenya. This bone has been dated to be 3.3 million years old. It belonged to a pre-human. A year later, in August 1999, a skull was discovered in nearly the same location and this skull came from the Kataboy deposit and it was dated to be 3.53 million years old. So until 2001, it wasn't clear to which species or genus these fossils belonged to, but eventually they were assigned as the type species for Kenyanthropus platyops. Kenyanthropus as the name for the genus, and Platyops as the species name. So the naming of this species was actually quite deliberately done, as Kenya is the place where the fossils were found. Anthropus is the Greek word for man, as I explained in my Paranthropus genus video that I created about a week ago. Uh, Platyops comes from the Greek words of platis, which means flat, and ops, which means face. So therefore, the name of Kenyanthropus platyops actually quite literally translates to flat-faced man from Kenya. And I think that's pretty freaking awesome. But why were they placed in a new genus and not assigned to any of the existing genuses? Well, the answer to that is that the researchers who investigated the remains had quite the difficulty assigning these remains to any genus that already existed. The fossils were too different to be put into the Ardipithecus genus. The weathering of the fossils was too bad to place them in the Homo genus, as they were simply too old. There weren't many similarities with the Paranthropus species, so therefore it couldn't be placed in that genus either. Usually what happens when researchers are faced with species like these, you know, species that don't fit in any of the other genuses, they're often placed in the genus of the Australopithecus because, yeah, you know, that's a solution. And even though none of the researchers opposed to this option, they were actually quite hesitant because it might actually challenge the place of the Australopithecus genus in our evolutionary tree. It might challenge them for the place of being our direct human ancestor. There is a possibility that Kenyanthropus platyops is a direct ancestor of us modern humans. The reason for this is the similarities of Kenyanthropus platyops with Homo rudolfensis. Although in modern times Homo rudolfensis is usually seen as being part of the Homo habilis lineage, but besides the similarities to Rudolfensis, the researchers did not feel like Kenyanthropus platyops had enough similarities to the other Homo species. So therefore, it wasn't placed inside our lineage in the Homo genus. It was even suggested that the remains of Homo Rudolfensis should have been reassigned to Kenyanthropus. This was actually even pushed by David Cameron in 2003, who did publish a paper under the name of Kenyanthropus rudolfensis. However, 
This was not followed by the anthropologists or the paleoanthropologists, and therefore it died a slow death. Another reason as to why it was hard for researchers to assign Kenyanthropus somewhere in the evolutionary timeline is the fact that the skull that was discovered was fragmented and it had to be reconstructed. So what many people don't know is that reconstructions like these can be incredibly unreliable due to the fact that the shape of the eventual reconstruction can be influenced by the person reconstructing it. It can be deformed by filling in fissures and therefore the true appearance is almost impossible to figure out. Although research was done later on and they said that it showed that the facial reconstruction was actually quite well done. But yeah, um, there are people who say that the flat face for which Kenyanthropus platyops is mostly well known for might actually be a result of a miscalculation of the angle of the jaw edge to the back of the skull. And thus, there are some researchers that would like to erase the genus of Kenyanthropus and the species of platyops as they actually want these fossils to be attributed to the Australopithecus afarensis species in the Australopithecus genus. Yeah. Australopithecus afarensis was known to live at the same time in the same area as Kenyanthropus platyops. And Australopithecus afarensis has been identified as the last common ancestor of both the genus of Paranthropus, actually otherwise known as the robust Australopithecines that I covered in last week's video, and the genus of Homo, to which we belong. Australopithecus afarensis plays a very key role in that part of the evolutionary tree. If the reconstruction of Kenyanthropus is right, like the research paper later on said, it could actually mean that Kenyanthropus was a species that developed at the base of either of these two branches. It's possible that they were at the base of the branch that led to the Paranthropus genus, but it's also possible that they were at the base of the branch that led to the genus of Homo and all the human species that came before our own species. All the species that eventually led to our species, modern humans, Homo sapiens sapiens. There's actually a possibility that the flat face is a precursor to the face of the fossils of Homo rilofensis, which would lead to Kenyanthropus being more closely related to the genus of Homo and our ancestor. It might actually point to them being a part of our evolutionary tree. So there is a lot of speculation and not much certainty when it comes to the genus and species of Kenyanthropus platyops. But what do we actually know for sure about this species from this new genus? We know that they lived between 3.5 and 3.2 million years ago, that their brain size was similar to that of Australopithecus afarensis at approximately 430 cubic centimeters. Kenyanthropus platyops had small molar teeth and small canine roots, and their teeth had thick enamel, which is actually comparable to that of Australopithecus afarensis and Australopithecus anamensis. But only the enamel is comparable, because the Australopithecines have big molar teeth and big canine roots. The face of Kenyanthropus platyops was relatively large, as I have said before, the face was flat. And the brow ridge actually lacked the depression behind it that we see in most other species living around the same time. So around the time the Kenyanthropus emerged in the evolutionary timeline, there were a lot of species living in the same area as them. They lived together with Australopithecus afarensis, Australopithecus africanus, and Australopithecus diarimida. And lastly, we have Australopithecus baral ghazali that lived during the same time, although their fossils have only been discovered in the country of Chad. So therefore it's unclear if they inhabited the same area. The chances for that might be slim to none. They might be located just in their area. Of course, there has been lots of debates as to how these hominin species were able to inhabit the same area at the same time. It might be that they all had their own preferences in their diet and that this led to less competition. This could actually be the reason for the differences in their appearance because the jaws could have been specialized in either chewing or, you know, if they had smaller 
molars and canine teeth that was maybe better for slicing you know therefore less robust jaws I, endless possibilities as you can imagine this is unknown and it's hard to explain how they survived living in the same area simultaneously the area they inhabited was a mixture of forests and grasslands with lots of lakes and rivers it is believed that Kenyanthropus platyops was a herbivore, although it's unclear which types of plants they actually ate. And I do feel like they might be an omnivore, but I'll touch on that a little later, because they might have had stone tools, so therefore they could have eaten meat. So when we look at the timeline and when Kenyanthropus platyops actually lived, it is possible that they are the species responsible for the footprints that have been discovered at Latoli in Tanzania. It's actually quite possible. We know that they were a bipedal species. They were a pre-human species. They lived in that area around that same time. Although the most popular theory for the Latoli footprints is that Australopithecus afarensis is responsible for them. Yes, that's the species of Lucy. The stone tools known as the Lomequian stone tool industry has actually been attributed to Kenyanthropus platyops. They were most likely the creators of these tools because they were the only hominins discovered at the Lomequi site near the tools. The Lomequi stone tool industry is actually the very oldest stone tool industry that we have found so far, dating back to 3.3 million years ago. I even created a video on the invention of stone tools and I highly recommend the watch. It's amazing. So until we discover more fossilized remains, the placement of Kenyanthropus platyops, as you can imagine, won't be resolved and Therefore, I continued this video about Kenyanthropus platyops as a new genus and a new species, because at this point in time, this is how these fossils are known. I always enjoy looking into these lesser well-known ancient species of humans and pre-humans, and I love learning more about the evolutionary timeline and how the many different species affected our own evolution eventually, how everything that happened before us eventually led to us. But because there isn't too much known about Kenyanthropus platyops, and this is all the information that I was able to gather, you have unfortunately reached the end of this video. If you enjoyed watching, then don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you'd like to see more of these kind of videos, and click that bell icon if you want to be notified whenever I upload. If you haven't seen my previous videos yet, then click the card in the upper right corner, click one of the links in the description down below, or click a video in the end card. I would also like to say a massive thank you to all my patrons and my channel members. I am eternally grateful. I will start posting more content on there from next week onward. I'll be busy this week, like the upcoming week, but after the upcoming week I'll post more. Yeah, I have a vet visit with my cat plant because my cat actually has skin cancer and I don't like the fact that it has that, but it's gonna be fine and I've blabbed enough. Everything will be fine with my cat, I'm sure. My vet told me not to worry, so I will place all my trust in her. She's been amazing so far. I've known her for nine years. It's gonna be fine. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.